Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Holy Trinity Lutheran Church on this 10th Sunday after Pentecost. It's August 9th, 2020. For worship today, if you'd like to follow along in a bulletin, it's on the front of our website. It's sancarloshtlc.org, sancarloshtlc.org. And, um, or you should have received an email if you're a member of our congregation. That should have the video link to it. Let's prepare our minds and our hearts for worship with our prelude. We begin with our gathering litany. Though we are each in our own homes, we are the one body of Christ. Though we are separated in person, we worship together in the one spirit. Friends, let us lay down our whole lives on the altar of God. Holy God, we offer to you our sacrifice of praise. We offer you our joys. We offer you our sorrows. In all, blessed be your name. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, our defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from 1 Kings. 19, chapter 19, 9 through 18. At Horeb, the Mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I am alone and left, am left, and then they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. 
Now, now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks and pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, what are you doing there, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I am alone and left. And they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel Mahola, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Haziel, Yehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Yehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Romans 10, verses 5 through 15. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and is so justified, and one confesses with the mouth and, and, is, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is the Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one whom they have not, not heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from land. The wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw that he was walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to the water, to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. 
But when he noticed the strong wind, he became afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying, You of little faith, why do you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Would you please join me in prayer? Merciful and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be reflections of your love. Amen. In today's reading from 1 Kings, Elijah is on the run. He has killed the prophets of Baal and Jezebel and Ahab. They seek to kill him. He flees to Mount Horeb. It's there that he says in this uh, in today's scripture, that, that he was afraid. So he, he seeks after God. In looking for God, he realizes that God is not in the wind. God is also not in the earthquakes, but in the silence. God is in the space where there is nothing going on. It was silent. Elijah experienced the freedom from the fear of death when God was meeting him in that silence. Now, that, now, this is interesting because this is actually very different from our gospel reading today. It's very different from Peter's story. See, the disciples are on the boat, and, and the boat is being tossed by the windstorm, and, and the disciples, they are afraid. The wind still rages, and, and Jesus comes out and meets them on the boat. Now, not only were they afraid of being tossed by the wind, they were afraid because they thought Jesus was a ghost. And they see him walking on the water. Peter asks Jesus to try walking on that same water, and he does it. But the wind is still going on all around them, and, and Peter, who is now walking on water, he notices the wind again. He begins to sink. Jesus saves him and tells him that he has little faith. Unlike Elijah, Peter meets the Lord out in the water in the midst of chaos and grueling winds. I find it interesting that the divine is found both in the silence and in the storms because I think that's just about true about life in general. God is present among, amongst all of the aspects of our lives. It seems to me that that true freedom from fear comes in trusting God. Trusting that God will bring God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven because God has promised that creation will be reconciled to God. And that in Jesus there is true freedom. What does Jesus say? He says, look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more value than they? My sense is that we Christians, we know that. We are free, but, but we, we just don't realize that we are free. I read the story a while back. I want to read it again. There was a, once a man on a very long journey, and, and he stumbled upon this bag of gold. The bag was heavy, but he hoisted it up over his shoulder, and he continued to walk down the road. And he was hunched over with the bag of gold on his shoulder, leaning to one side. Walking past the town, he saw a beautiful woman who was seated on this rounded stone. They talked, and his heart skipped a beat, but she soon turned away. The stone that she sat on reminded him of her, of her beauty and, and his longing, and so he decided to take that stone with him. 
Bending forward, his arm outstretched, he began to roll the stone. Down the road he went. He had a bag of gold hunched over his shoulder, stooping to roll the stone with his other arm and working up a furious sweat. At the road he saw a pig that was wandering. And he thought, you know, I'd really like to own a pig and eat it. So he, uh, he tied, he saw that no one had claim to the pig. And so he caught it with a rope and he tried to lead it down the road, but the, the pig was too slow, so he tied the under the end to his leg and he dragged the pig behind him. And so imagine, down the road he went, he was hunched over with a bag of gold on his shoulder, and with his other arm, he's rolling the stone, and then he's dragging the pig behind him. So walking past the field, he saw, he saw this blackberry bush. And he's, and he's like, I'm really hungry, I want to eat this. So he starts eating them, and, and the thorns started scratching his face. Soon as teeth and his mouth were stained purple from the fruits and his hands became sticky but down the road he went hunched over with a bag of gold on one shoulder stooping to roll the stone with his other arm and then dragging the pig behind him in his face and his hands scratched and stained with the sweet blackberry juice he traveled for many days like that one night he stopped and uh, he fell asleep. And when he woke up, he noticed that everything was gone. They'd taken everything away from him. Somebody had robbed him. So at daybreak, he dusted himself off and he, and he continued on his way, now empty-handed, free of the burdens. But by force of habit, he continued to walk as if he still carried the bag of gold on his shoulder, the stone, rolling the stone and the pig on the rope. And so down the road he went, stooping with his arm extended, dragging his foot behind him. His face and his hands were still stained with the blackberry juice. A young kid saw that he was limping down the road the way he was, and, and he thought it was peculiar, and, and he turned to his grandmother. He said, why does that man look so strange? Why does he walk so funny? Looking at the man as he passed, the grandmother said, the road is straight, but the man is crooked. Made that way, but all that he tried to carry and a hunger that he could never satisfy. You too, my child, will one day take the shape of your journey by what you wish for and by what you carry. You too will take on the, the shape of your journey. The man was free from, from all that would weigh him down. He was freed and he still acted as if he was bound. The truth is, is that many of us don't experience the freedom that we already have because we have taken on the shape of our journey. So what is the shape of your journey? In today's gospel readings, Peter's journey was, was walking on the water amidst the chaotic winds. Even with little faith, Peter imitates Jesus wanting to be like his master. The freedom that Christ brings allows us to go in the chaos, knowing that Christ is to meet us there in the midst of that. And this year, my dear family of God, has been chaotic. The freedom that Christ brings frees us to go into that chaos, to proclaim the love of God in Christ. The freedom that is based solely on God's grace. It's the, the freedom knowing that Christ goes into the midst of, of that particular situation and lifts us out of the water. Remember 
that in God there is nothing but freedom. God has promised us a life of freedom through him. Let that journey shape you, and may you take on the characteristics of your guide. Amen. We continue with our words of confession and absolution. In response to your word of life, God, we confess all our sin, known and unknown. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In the silence of the next moment and in the stillness of our own hearts, let us confess our sin to God. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives you all of your sin. 
As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together let us say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For your whole church throughout the world, give courage in the midst of storms so that we see and hear Jesus calling. Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. May we follow Christ wherever he leads. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the well-being of your creation, protect waterways, forests, lands, and wildlife from exploitation and abuse. Help the human family endeavor to sustain and be sustained by the resources of your hand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations and their leaders, in you steadfast love and faithfulness meet, and righteousness and peace kiss. May nations in conflict know the peace that is the fruit of justice and the justice that is the path to peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in need, everyone who calls upon your name will be saved. Accompany all who are lonely, hear the voices of those who cry out in anguish, and support those who are frustrated in their search for an affordable place to live. We pray for those suffering this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our congregation, you have gathered us here today as your people, and we thank you for this gift. We pray for those who are new to this community, for students and teachers preparing for a new school year, and for those struggling with unexpected hardship. Supply us generously with your grace for our life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for the saints of the whole church from all times and places, and for the saints in our lives and in our community whom you've gathered to yourself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Together, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For the Rymans, peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. Receive now the blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all, bless you now and forever. Amen. Gracious Spirit, heed our pleading, fashion us all anew. It's your leading that we're needing, help us to follow you.
come, Holy Spirit, come, 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 Holy Spirit, come, not me knowledge, but discernment, nor ruthless liberty, turn this quiet to contentment, doubt into certainty. to love, witness, and grow through God's grace. Thanks be to God, and we will.